is quite cold, so it's, it's going to ensure that no one gets soporific. Uh, <laughs> let me stay warm, so that should be definitely great. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and it's a pleasure to be standing over here and sharing a bit of my life through the key to success. When I was a young boy, roughly about five or six years old, my dad decided to take some really drastic decisions. He left a nice permanent job in Ford Motor Company and decided to start his own business. Well, that's perfectly fine. But he ventured into something which he had no clue about. He took all his savings, my dad started a business, got into partnership with someone, and did not have even a contract in place to cover the T's and C's, which is really important. This kind of is a risky decision. Unfortunately, things did not work out, and the business went completely south. This not only wiped out his entire savings, but it also put him into a massive amount of debt, which had a profound impact on my life. So the childhood days which I grew up through were <coughs> extremely tough. A lot of people say, I remember the childhood days as one of the most amazing times. Trust me, I dread them. It's not somewhere where I'd like to go back. And I went through these struggles, and in the process I became someone who almost became a bit shy, an introvert, a low level of confidence, almost someone who went into a shell. And I went through that struggle. But somewhere inside there was a little spark which said, you can turn this around, something, something's going to happen, you need to do something about it. But I didn't know the answer, I didn't know what to do. And I made my way through schooling and I got through college, did some odd jobs, and I finally got my degree in psychology. And then I got my first job. The interesting part was, the job I got was in a five-star hotel in India, it was the Taj Group of Hotels, which is one of India's leading five-star chains. And that was a turning point. Because suddenly, this shy person who didn't have the confidence to even have a one-to-one -one conversation was standing at the reception in front of hundreds of thousands of people, top celebrities, tycoons, tourists, and you just had to talk. At the reception, you just can't be shy because I was dealing with cash and problems and I was suddenly doing so much more. But the most interesting part of the job was I came across a lot of people who were very, very successful in life. And I started wondering, what is it about these people that makes them so different? What is the key to their success? The interesting thing I found again is that many of these people who I got to know weren't people who were born in the lap of luxury. They weren't people who had a strong foundation, but they had almost risen from the ashes. And that's where the spark inside me converted into a flame. And I said, well, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to find my key to success. And that is what I, I'd like to share this evening with you. Mr. Toastmaster, the President, and my fellow guests, the key to success, I feel, is almost like an amalgamation of various personality traits. And I've drawn a little drag on for that, which I've drawn over here. And those are some of the personality traits that I find came across with these people. I found that some of the people were very responsive, they had leadership qualities, they had a can-do attitude. And that's what made them different from others. And I realized that you don't have to take each and every of these personality traits into your life. But if you could take even some of them, you can see your life transform. Today, this evening, I would like to share three of them, which I feel personally extremely important and helped me transform my life from where I was to where I am today. I do feel proud to say, from, from the boy who was kind of sitting in that corner, kind of thinking life's not taking anywhere, often even thinking about suicide, being of here in London, working in one of the world's top law firms, managing a team of 18, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long journey. And it's been through some of the aspects which I've taken in my life and I'd like to share with you. The first one which I'd like to share is taking 100% responsibility. When you take 100% responsibility of your life, you're actually moving away from being in the passenger seat and coming into the driving seat and taking control of your life. You're not the person who's going to blame everyone and situations, but say, it's my life, I'm going to write the script. To make it simple, I put it in a little formula, which we can call E plus R is equal to O. So if E stands for an event, something happening in your life, R is the response you give to it, and O is the outcome. So to make it easy, I'll give an example. So let's say we've got Mr. A person, and you've got a person B. Both have just lost their job. Both have been made redundant. A says, oh, this is terrible, the management doesn't care for us, blah, 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 and goes down that route. 
He, on the other hand, just doesn't take it. Gets up every morning, goes to the job center, applies online, changes the LinkedIn profile, upgrades his skills, does everything which he thinks would help change the outcome. The event was the same for both. The response was different, the outcome changes. That's where you take 100% responsibility. So let's say if B stands for your birth and D stands for your death, you don't have control over either of these, right? You can't decide when you're born, you can't decide when you die. But in the journey of life, you do have choices. And the choices you make decides what this life turns out to be. If you make positive ones, you have positive outcomes. And of course we make our mistakes, we have, we have up and downs, but the choices you make decide the way your journey will turn out. So I strongly encourage each one of you to make those choices and take control of your life rather than blaming any of us. That's where you take 100% responsibility. Now, I know this is much more difficult said than done, but when you start doing it, you almost feel you're in power rather than someone else being in power. It's like, would you like someone taking away your remote control? No. Would you like someone driving your car? Well, it's good to be in control. So that's taking 100% responsibility. Another thing which I found extremely important in my life is believing in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else is going to believe in you. If you don't respect yourself, no one else will. So you have to believe in yourself. Some examples, again, to share with you, is Roger Bannister. In 1954, Roger Bannister was the first person to complete a mile in less than four minutes. Before that, no one ever thought that a, a person could run a mile in less than four minutes. But the moment he did it, another 62 people did it in one year. He just changed history. Edmund Hillary was the first person to climb Mount Everest. Once he did it, many more did it. When the Wright brothers tried to start creating a flying machine, most of the people thought, this is not going to work. But today we all know the aviation industry is part of our life. So it's about believing in yourself and taking that control and saying, I will make this happen. Even if some say, no, it's not going to work, take control. Because when you take control, things change. Sometimes things may not work out. When we go back to the drawing board, try it again. If it doesn't, go back to the drawing board, try it again. But take that control. The last thing, which is not the least, and I feel is really important, is focus. So when you're doing something, give it your 100%. Put in the best. The easy way out is making excuses. Well, I want to do this, but I can't because of blah, blah, blah. And we all have that excusitis, which we call the disease of giving excuses. The focus is saying, I'm going to make it happen. 12 months from now, in January of this year, I came to this club and I attended the event as a guest. And I thought it was great. So I joined straight away because I wanted to improve my speaking skills. And today here, on the 1st of December, I'm doing my 10th speech, completing the first platform of being a confident communicator. During the course of the 12 months, there's been a lot going on in my life. I've had a lot of challenges on the work front. I've dealt with a lot of personal issues. I got married in September. There was so much going on. But I kept the focus and said, I will make this happen. And here we are, standing and completing my 10th speech in front of you wonderful people. You have to be focused, and if you are focused, you can change anything. That is why I say that your life is what you make out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, the message I want to share this evening is each one of you is the script writer of your life. And if you are writing the script, you might as well write a blockbuster, right? Why a movie? Why not the normal one? Make it so special, because as time passes, you never get the moment again. Make it so special, give it your 100%. And this is not about living a rigid, military style lifestyle. Have fun, enjoy the journey, because every moment past is not gonna come back. Make it special, make the best of it, enjoy life, but live your dreams and transform your life, because we get one and we want a blockbuster. This is Toastmaster.